Hey guys, welcome back. Grumman Homestead. Today I've been, or I've been, I'm going to mess around with my butt. <laughs> my water butt, I'll show you. So as well as a thousand litre IBC, I have these two, uh, I think they're, they're either 200 or 250 litre butts. And uh, <clears throat> just come around this side a minute. So the, the original tap, this here, was there. So it, it's about maybe a foot up. And that's because originally I didn't have these, they were just sat on the soil. So in order to get enough room for a bucket or something, that's why I put them there. Anyway, uh, the only trouble is that once the... Sorry about that, the battery went. I have no idea how long this one's going to last. <clears throat> anyway. So what I've done is, I've lowered this tap down now and uh, I've blanked this off, but I, I need to replace this because it's, I tested it yesterday it was just weeping slightly out because it's, uh, it's not big enough, the diameter So I'll show you what I've got Yeah, so here's the other one, so I moved this tap yesterday and there's the original hole, it's 25mm or an imperial inch thereabouts and the challenge was to find something to stop that and I'm going to use this, it's a, an overflow stopper uh, and this is an inch, this thread here so um, there was surprisingly little information on the internet uh, some people were welding, plastic welding over it and stuff like that so I thought I would just show this in case anybody's uh, got the same predicament, so I'll come back to you in a moment or two when I've got this thing in. Boy, that was a tight fit. It's a good job I had an old uh, file. I just had to take about half a mil off uh, to get to get it in. I've also got some gutter sealant here, but I haven't put any on. I'm just going to try it and see if it will seal without um, having to put that uh, mastic on. So let's get a horse pipe in and we'll see, we'll give it a test. Okay, so while that's uh, filling up, I only have to get it just above really to see whether it's leaking or not. I'll get on and uh, take the other one out and by that time this should be filled up a little bit. Okay, well that didn't work. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little leak there. So. Uh, I think what I'll do is put some of that mastic on, I'll have to drain it until it's below again, take it out and put some mastic, this uh, gutter sealant behind this flange here and then nip it all back up again and uh, probably leave it 24 hours or something and then try again Any of you guys out there got any other ideas? Should I put a washer both sides? One behind the back nut and one behind here, would that do it? Uh, drop a comment down below Anyway, let's push on. Well, there's the other one. I, as I said, I put some gutter sealant behind the flange and then just gone around it with a wet finger. So I'm going to leave that uh, overnight and come back tomorrow and fill that one and see what happens uh, with that. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Well, we've had some cold weather recently, as folks in the UK will know. And uh, last night we didn't escape the frost and these are my neighbours uh, potatoes I've just noticed can you make that out? The frost has definitely hit them big time I'm glad I, I fleeced mine over actually I'm just going to go and have a look at them now but yeah they've definitely been hit by frost so I put mine under this fleece so uh, we can have a look, take some of the stones off that weighing it down. Even with the fleece on, just a little bit there. Just pause the camera tick and get the rest of this fleece off. So they have been caught a little bit. See this dark, but it's only—it's not every plant, and it's not 
nearly as bad as my neighbours. This one here seems to be the worst affected. So I'm really glad I put that fleece on. I mean, there's a few holes in it, so maybe that's why. Um, or perhaps where the leaves were touching the, the fleece itself. But anyway, I'm really glad that I, uh, I put that fleece on. So yeah. So guys, somebody's making a racket down there. 15th of May, and um, I'm going to update you on the single C challenge. I'm going to spin you around. So today. We're going to plant this bad boy out. So this was the uh, Zushini, originally from Tim at Troll Forge, who sent seed to Willie Coleman, and Willie sent me some seed. So what I've done here, under this black polythene, I've got um, I dug a hole and put a load of manure in. So we're going to sort of plant it into the bed of muck, if you will. And then I understand it's a trailing variety of Zushini. So hopefully, what I'm going to the intention will be to trail it down there. So I'll uh, get it planted bring you back. So they are. Hope he's uh, happy in the new home and he will uh, be productive. So I'll keep you updated on this single C challenge. Live long and prosper. So quick review, water tub, uh, water boat, I've uh, filled it up. And so far, no sign of any leak. And I'm just doing the same with this one. That's not far off being full now. And again at the moment, all looks good. So if there's no sign of any leaks tomorrow, I'm assuming I've cracked it. That'll be great. So I've got a couple of more weeks to uh, get the planting done. So yesterday I got these chrysanthemums. There's 30 odd in there, I think. And I've just planted this double row of um, dwarf French beans. And here's the first lot of the Arctic Plenty outdoor tomatoes, the bush tomato. So I've got nine, I've got another three which are in the frame, just hardening off a bit more. So that'll be another row. And then that gives me a half a bed, probably a mixture of dwarf French beans and possibly beetroot or spinach or something like that. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these do. And I've got another row of peas to go in just along there. I'll show you those in a minute. I've noticed the uh, scapes are coming on the elephant garlic. Now to me, I think it's really early. Um, so I'm gonna pin cut those out. Don't want energy being delivered into here. I want it to go into the bulb. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's three to four weeks early for that. Anyway, not a lot we can do about it. So here's the other peas. So I'll probably wait till they get another couple of inches and then uh, they'll be planted out. So it's the 16th of May and uh, yesterday I got these uh, bell peppers in. These are the King of the North, sent to me from South Paul Davy. Uh, so I've just got this little bit left now. Um, so the other ones, the monster bell peppers, obviously I'll, I can get about maybe one, two, three, about six or seven in here once these lettuce go. And that'll be the this space filled with the peppers, that shelf will come out so they can grow up. Uh, those will be going into the cold frame. These are my cucumbers and some more, that's a basil and an odd cherry there. And we've got, um, let me get around here. Some ripe strawberries, pims, <laughs> this afternoon. Oh yeah. Right, let's go and have a look outside. Now those are the Olga squash sent to me by Danielle. Um, so I'll show you what I'm thinking where to put those. 
So I'm not sure, but I think they're like a trailing pumpkin. So what I'm probably going to do is make a, a bit of a planting hole here and then sort of trail them along where these espaliers are. Because to be honest with you, I'm running out of room. <laughs> but that's the plan. That's the comfrey tea. I've just been stirring it. <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to get that strained off. Well, it's a pretty smelly job, <clears throat> but to be honest with you, it's not. Uh, I, I used to work uh, in slaughterhouses, and uh, it's nowhere near as bad as some of the smells that <laughs> emanated from there, I can tell you. Anyway, that bit's going to go back on the compost and we'll get these into these uh, one gallon um, containers. Yeah, so I've got the rest of the chrysanthemums potted up. These are a late variety, so that's why I put them in pots. So then uh, about October they'll go into the greenhouse for protection um, so the flowers don't get damaged. We're getting there now, we're almost fully planted out. But this bit here is where I had a gooseberry bush and uh, I think I'm going to put one of those Olga squashes. I can use this space here, just in front of the cold frame. But you can see how hard the ground is, That's how dry it's been. There's absolutely no moisture in there at all. So I'm going to punch a few holes in and then give it a good soak in and hopefully that will loosen it up. So that uh, batch of comfort here, I've got three gallons there and about half a gallon so I'm going to water that on now to the raspberries and the fruit trees and then start another batch so that's it for now guys we'll uh, catch you later so you're going to close with a shot of these uh, loganberries all coming into flower now 